Hey, hey welcome, friend. welcome, welcome. Thanks we so much. I've been here. having your uh, food for so many years. It's finally great to come meet you and see where it all got started. Uh, every time we're in Memphis football, I know we have uh, you we, guys catering, been, uh, so we look uh, forward to that. My brother has been doing the catering the press box for many, many years for University of Memphis. That's so. awesome. Anyway, as you can, as everybody knows, the most one of the most notable things about the rendezvous is number one, it's in a basement, in an alley across from the Peabody Hotel in downtown Memphis. So uh, the other thing that people notice is that let's see, if we, we can look up high. Well, it's kind of cloudy. Is we're always cooking ribs, right. and you can smell rendezvous all over downtown Memphis. This is where we cook all of our ribs right here in the open. Smoker? Yeah, we're not open officially, but we're, you know, of course, cooking wow. all day. It really started as an 80-seat tavern, and through the years we've expanded 140 here, and then another 200 and something there, and so right now we seat almost 700 people. How and many ribs do you go through a night? Well, we do 8,000 pounds a week, but we'll feed 4,000 people a week. That's in five days, which kind of, sure. kind of overwhelmed. Yeah. I mean, you know, it, it didn't start out that way, and, and it just overwhelms us. My dad was an amazing collector, and what happened is he had a, a diner. After he, he got out of World War II and started a diner, and with his brother-in-law, and they and they it really they really didn't agree on how the business should run. But he couldn't get out of lease. Said, "Look, you keep the diner. I'm gonna go in the basement, and I'm gonna do something." So he cleaned it up, started decorating with his junk that he used to pick up all over downtown Memphis wow. and now a lot of this stuff that he's collected is um, I mean it's pretty amazing stuff some ivory soap some Colgate oh, yeah. stuff that, that they don't even have in the corporate collection uh, you know we've got as you walk around we've got antique toys antique guns uh, furniture uh, art um, Geez, uh, we have a signed copy of the Memphis Blues by W.C. Handy. Uh, so what is my favorite? Okay. In 1964, my dad, the Rolling Stones came to Memphis, and you're not old enough to remember how raggedy they were, but they were pretty raggedy. So when they came down, and you know, my dad, here's a picture of my dad. He's a big, tough Greek guy, and he didn't take, he didn't take crap off anybody. <laughs> and so he was going to throw them out, and the guy at the Peabody Hotel called up and said, Chark, the Rolling Stones are coming down. And I think he said something like, I've seen, I see who they are. I know, you know, and anyway, he, he got to be kind of buddies with them. They set up at night and drank and all that. So every time they toured, they would come to the rendezvous. When they, so they'd been here, I don't know, four or five times with it as a group or individually. And in 1997 or 1999, it was either Mick Jagger or his daughter's birthday, and they rented the whole upstairs and um, for an exclusive party and it was pre-cell phones, there were no photos. And in the middle of the event, they got their instruments out, there was a little blues band that was playing and they played. I mean, they actually played the rendezvous and nobody would believe us. And then about seven or eight years ago, I mean, we had this list and we would tell people, you know, the Rolling Stones played at the rendezvous and they say, oh, bullshit, you know? Yeah. And uh, we said, no, they really played. And then someone found a picture on the internet and so- And there it is. There they are. The Rolling Stones upstairs at the rendezvous. We've catered Air Force One several times. I mean, we've fed Presidents Bush, Obama, Bill Clinton, you know, Vice Presidents Gore, Dan Quayle, Walter Mondale, uh, you know, presidential candidates out, the, you know, but just uh, uh, the Prime Minister of Japan was also here, Prince Harry, Prince William. So, um, That's if you'll pardon my name dropping, Peyton Archie. Or, well, that's Peyton Eli. Archie was a great customer of ours. He even claims when he was in college, he used to get his mail down here. He used to hang out so often. <laughs> Two of our servers retire a few years ago that had been here 50, 100 years between them. And before them, Big Jack Dyson, who passed away recently, was here 52 years. Uh, wow. You know, uh, we I, I guess our average longevity for our servers is probably 25 years. Bobby, good all to right, see you, man. Right, How are right, you? Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. All, all right. right. You got to take me through this. Uh, all uh, right. Now, what's the saying again? If you can't take the heat, get the get hell, hell out, out of the, the kitchen. kitchen. No, we're right. going into the kitchen. All, all right. right. Let's go from around this right. way. And this is where we, where we do all our cooking, of, basically of everything, from our ribs to chicken breast, chicken dinners, lamb, 
Um, you know, the only thing we don't base it on cooking is our pulled pork and beef yeah. bridge because it takes 12 to 14 hours to cook them items here. But we use one of what we call one of the best ribs you can buy, which is called a lawn back rib. It's not a baby back rib. It's not a spare rib. It's a lawn back rib. It has enough fat in it to preserve it to keep it from drying out. And this is where we do all our cooking. Wow. Right here. Now, where do you get these ribs? We get them out basically. Our ribs are packed in Denison, Iowa. Okay. They pack our label to them. We use a special cut rib. It's a two and three quarter pound slab. We don't want it no more than that and stuff, you know. And we, like, we started off on the top. We put them up on the top. And every time we move a slab here, we bring a slab down. It takes us an hour and 30 minutes to cook yep. a slab of rib. And like I said, as long as we cook them, we're always base. This is what we keep our base solution in right here. Aren't we always doing this? And that's what you see, that sizzling. Yeah. See, that creates the smoke I to like come that. up, and it helps create the flavor in our rib. How much do you do it though? How, much, how many times you, you, are you going to base you, it? As many times as you desire to do that. It's a base. Look at that. Yep, see, that's yeah, what it is. These are going to be good. Yep. The temperature in this pit probably gets about 350 to 400 degrees. As long as you see, as long as your charcoals are staying white, yep. that's, no, that's showing that you're getting the heat. But once that uh, ash turns gray and cold like, you got to add some more charcoal got it, to got it. it. All right, we so go through roughly. 200 bags of charcoal a week. It's just charcoal alone. That's They're awesome. a 20 pound bag. It's getting pretty hot. Yeah. You got to close <laughs> it. Yeah, all right. All right. What, what's, uh, what's in this right here? It's, a, it's a pickle juice basting with vinegar and our, and our seasoning. That's what we put in there. It's all right. Let's get it. Yeah. And you know what he just said? You don't know, see my hands ain't turning like that. Oh, I can do it. <laughs> I've, been, I've been doing this. Metal. It's hot. Yeah. Oh, these are the man. first. See, these like two that. doors right here. Or the two first original pits that the rendezvous started off with. Back in 1948. Wow. These are the two, two Look doors. Look at that. Yeah. Hey, how about I'm going to be smelling like rendezvous the whole rest of the day? People well, are going to be asking me about this. You might get you a hot date being smelling yeah. like ribs. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't, I don't do that. But I will bring more people <laughs> to your restaurant. There you That's go. For sure. I can't imagine how nuts it is back here trying to get it, it all It gets crazy. You know, we probably curse each other out more than you ever would think so. <laughs> Because, you know, it's all about working. You're trying to get orders in and out. And we know that we don't mean them. When you're calling, a, you're, you got an extra night out there, Holly, give me four holes, one half. You got the waiters out there on your ass about trying to get the customers right. served. But that's just the craziness of the rendezvous. I mean, my dad didn't have marketing consultants right. and design consultants and investment bank. I mean, Social it's just. Social media, which is what we're doing now. Yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah, right. Oh, I don't know how my dad would have done social media because he's the kind of guy, if, you know, if he doesn't like it or he doesn't like what you're doing, get your ass out. You know. <laughs> yeah, one star. Here you go. Patty LaBelle, uh, Roy Williams, yeah. who's a really good customer. Matter of fact, the two national championships he won, the regional finals were in Memphis, and so he thinks of us as kind of a good luck That's great. piece, so he does come down. Uh, Peyton and Eli, that was, uh, we catered Eli's excuse me, Peyton's 30th birthday, I think, in oh, Indianapolis. Wow. So, I mean, he didn't start off cooking ribs. It started off just smoking ham and cheese. When He, he found that old smoker in there. Yeah. And what he did was, um, and also, nobody served ribs. I mean, people served shoulder sandwiches. But, I mean, Memphis is a big barbecue town, and I always defy people to tell me someplace. There may have been some place that served ribs, but I think we're the first restaurant that served ribs. And I know we're the first restaurant that served loin back ribs because they were scrap product. But what he was doing was he was trying to smoke all kinds of different things. And a, and a, a friend of our family said, hey, he was in the food business, we're great, of course. Yeah. Uh, he brought these ribs and said, why don't you start cooking these? So he's growing them and you know, doing all this. And he'd put, you know, baste them with vinegar and salt, pepper, oregano, and garlic because Greeks cook everything right. that way. And, uh, and they were okay. But then he went to New Orleans and he got into all the chili peppers and the cayenne, the chili powders and the cayenne peppers and the, the paprika, all those Cajun seasonings. So when he came back to Memphis, he mixed them together, he threw in some extra paprika to give a nice red charcoal color. And so that's the rub that we still that's use awesome. today. We still cook them the and same. And you sell that too, obviously. Uh, right? yeah, of course. Yeah. Of course <laughs> Elvis never came because he always wanted to 
rent the whole place. And my dad, you know, said, oh, screw Elvis, we're not renting the whole place to Elvis. But Man, we, you almost had Elvis but, and the Rolling Stones, but you'll take the Rolling yeah, Stones. Yeah, but we, <laughs> we used to send ribs out to, uh, uh, his doctor was our doctor, so okay. we would, Dr. Nick, so we would send ribs out with Dr. Nick. You know, we do uh, ship our ribs via FedEx all over the country, um, and uh, they travel well, we ship everything overnight. We, uh, we're Project Green Fork certified, so we don't use any styrofoam, so we, we ship it, and again, with FedEx being headquartered here in Memphis, it makes it easy for us to do it overnight, and they've been a really good partner for us. And I think, I think only Omaha Steaks predated us in shipping, right. shipping food. Can I tell you about our slaw? Please do. My grandfather had a hot dog stand on Beale Street in 1917, and that was the slaw he used to put on hot dogs, and it's mustard vinegar based. And, I, I'm, and um, it's still great on a hot dog. So it's a hundred-year-old recipe. Wow! And um, it's got a little zing it to does. it. It does. It's got a little, yeah, absolutely. But that, I gave you the nickel tour. Yeah, no, so. that's more than a nickel tour. That's great. Thank yeah, you so I much. I appreciate for you guys.